Welcome everyone to The Real Report. Shout out to the new subscribers. We're going to be covering the fact that the U.S. economy is on a collision course. We've got a lot of great material to go over, but first a little housekeeping, so stay tuned for just about 30 seconds. Well, I can say thank you everyone for 20,000 views, which is absolutely incredible. We hit that in the last uh, 48 hours. There's also a larger issue at hand. We've been, of course, censored for wrong think, uh, clearly based on these images on your screen. Here on the left, you can see my view counts plummeting with each and every video and my subscriber growth went from exponential to flatlining. We're going to continue the fight, but I really need you guys to join in. The biggest thing you can do to help out, like the video. Again, just smack the hell out of the like video. Comment a bunch, because it's going to count as interaction. Use an emoji if you're lazy, the brain emoji, the trident emoji, thumbs up emoji, whatever. Subscribe, watch all the way through for the view time. Thank you guys for your support, because obviously without you, I'm not going to be here. And thanks again to Rob for the donation on Buy Me A Coffee. It is very much appreciated. But again, here, just look at the subscriber growth flatlining for the entire last month. And again, the views plummeting. That's after my Russia-Ukraine video and frankly mentioning the uh, lab experiments they were working on with the thing that is going to kill 80% of mice. So after that, well, I am being <laughs> punished by my draconian overlords for wrong thing. Now, without further ado, renters finally hit the breaking point, forcing landlords to slash prices. After a record surge in housing costs and ballooning expenses for everything from food to energy, America's renters have had enough. Rent gains are finally starting to slow in many parts of the U.S., and the Fed will not ease up until inflation abates, which requires rents to slow. The sooner the better, and the harder the better for quick relief. The average American had to put in more than Hear this, 64 hours of work in September to pay the typical monthly rent. Think about that for a moment. 64 hours of work, okay, over a week to pay just the monthly rent, let alone food for your kids, your wife, etc., schooling costs, clothing, oh, medical, dental, you know, cars, bills, gas, insurance, all that good stuff just to pay your rent 64 hours now setting apartment demand negative for the first time for any third quarter in the last 30 years dating back to 1992 so that's where we're sitting at and there's a near record amount of newly built apartments under construction and heading for completion adding to the rental inventory so hopefully things are going to continue to cool down uh, we're going to cover mortgages later into the video now wealthy californians could face billions in new taxes after midterm elections top california tax rate could climb to 16.15 percent the highest in the nation as people continue to flee that state now voters approve a controversial tax the rich ballot measure in this year's november midterm election the measure proposition 30 would hike taxes by 1.75 percent and those earning two mil per year generating another five billion in revenue annually now funny enough the bulk of that money is going to go to programs to help people get this buy electric cars and install charging stations yes because that is uh going to help the lower and middle class biggest financial backer here's the real joke ride sharing company lyft which donated at least 45 million ahead of the mandate <coughs> aka lobbying that will require the majority of its drivers to use electric vehicles by 2030 ah Yes, there's always a motive. And should the tax pass, wealthy Californians would see the top marginal rate on their wage income climb to 16.15%. California already has the highest income tax in the country, with a top rate of 13.3% for those earning more than one mil. Absolutely disgusting, and they wonder why everybody is fleeing in droves. When you have to leave the state to buy a gas mower and bring it back, it's time to reevaluate. Kraft Heinz CEO, inflation and supply shortages are here to stay for a while. They're not going anywhere. Now, he said the CEO on Monday does not see higher inflation and supply chain issues ending in the near future. Says we will have other rounds of price increases. He told CNN the company hiked prices by 12.4% already. So that's only going to continue to go up. Meanwhile, 93% of registered voters are worried about skyrocketing inflation and the state of the economy as the midterm elections approach. Turkey prices, in case you guys thought you were going to get off easy for Thanksgiving. Of course, earlier in the year, I covered in a video the uh, 
Oh, uh, which one? One of the branches of the Federal Reserve said, if you switch to soy for your Thanksgiving feast, you could save money. Well, I, for one, am not going to be switching to the soy bug agenda uh, just to have a Thanksgiving meal with family. However, turkey price is set to soar for Thanksgiving, gobbling up a bigger part of the family budget, and farmers are grappling with inflation, drought, and avian flu, which could drive prices even higher as Thanksgiving approaches. Now, wholesale prices on turkeys rose 30% higher than they were in 2021. Corn and other turkey feed are highly dependent on weather extremes and drought conditions can lead to lack of production. I've covered food and famine pretty extensively, so if you guys are familiar with my work, then you're already in the know. One in five Americans are unsure whether they can afford the cost of Thanksgiving this year. One in five, they don't know. One third, even worse, expect their 2022 Thanksgiving dinner to be smaller. 45% said they are financially stressed by this coming Thanksgiving. 40, half of the country is concerned that they cannot afford Thanksgiving dinner. Unacceptable. Biden's economy is causing Americans anxiety when it comes to how they will afford to pay for things such as housing, food, and gasoline for their cars. 81% say Joe Biden's economy will be a major factor in how they vote, as it should be. Although the funny part is they've been artificially keeping the costs of, uh, say, oil low with draining the SPR to help out with the midterms. But it's funny because they're losing. And once they pass the bag off to uh, the conservatives who take their seats and uh, prices start to climb, then it'll look like it was Republicans' fault. And I don't care for either party, for the record. Consumer debt hits record for most Americans, except the wealthy. Consumer debt, including credit cards, rose to an all-time high for the 118 million U.S. households among the bottom 90%. The group's debt soared by $300 billion over the last year, the largest annual gain on record ever. Largest annual gain on record in all time. And of course, inflation is running near a 40-year high. Fed data shows the consumer liabilities increased to $4.2 trillion in the second quarter of this year for the bottom 90%. And credit card interest rates for new accounts have risen above 20% for those with even good or fair credit. As, of course, the economy... We're in a recession and uh, probably headed for a depression. Anyone who tells you otherwise is a fool. Consumer confidence falls more than expected as inflation hammers assessment of economy. Consumer confidence down to the lowest level in three months, indicating that economic growth slowed at the start of the fourth quarter. Now, that's largely due to the labor market strength and declining gas prices, but consumer short-term outlook for income, business, and labor market conditions declined. Again, another historically low level. For the labor market conditions, a level associated with recession suggesting recession risk appears to be rising. Well, I'm not really sure how high it can rise, given that we're in one. Notably, concerns about inflation, which had been receding since July, picked up again with both gas and food prices serving as main drivers. And of course, vacation intentions cooled. High prices could make the holiday season challenging for retailers. Of course, they're not going to be able to afford gifts if you can't even afford a turkey for dinner. Many result in steep discounting, which would reduce retailers' profit margins. And of course, you guys see that the current earnings coming out are abysmal. All it takes is to go look at Facebook. Texas woman, here's just a quality of life update. This is absolutely horrible. Texas woman waits on hold with 911 for 15 minutes as husband dies from heart attack amid staffing shortage. 64% of 911 calls were answered within 15 seconds in Austin last month, well below the 90% national standard. Now, a woman in Lender near Austin said she was left on hold by a dispatcher for 15 minutes. She asked her father-in-law to also call the emergency dispatcher so that she wouldn't lose her place in line, and his call took more than 10 minutes. It took him 10 minutes, and 911 company realized he was in a different county, so they transferred him, and it took another 3 minutes. So 13 minutes to talk to somebody. Mine was a minimum of 15, if not 20 minutes while she performed CPR on her husband on the ground. 64% of 911 calls in Austin were answered within 15 seconds, but the standard of 90% of the calls being answered in 15 seconds or less. Average wait time for 38,000 
was two and a half minutes. You're on your own. Nobody's coming to save you. Uh, so you guys better train. You better get some medical experience. Take some classes. Become self-sufficient because that's the only way that you can nearly guarantee your own survival. Nearly half of the 105 911 operator positions are vacant and 19 out of 75 dispatcher positions are unfilled. And they're talking about that being a 2018 level. So again, prepare and become independent. Elon Musk promised on a video call with bankers that he will close the Twitter deal by Friday. A judge gave Musk until 5 p.m. on October 28th, which is tomorrow on Friday, to close the deal or face a trial. Banks, which include Morgan Stanley and Bank of America, are in the process of signing the documents for the debt financing agreement. And the middle class is dying. 50% of all American workers made less than $3,133 a month last year. That is unsustainable to say the very least. Now, inflation, this is a good one from the most important news.com, which usually these articles, I thought this was by Michael, but getting into it, inflation is systematically destroying our standard of living. The middle class is shrinking a little bit more with each passing day. The Social Security Administration just released wage statistics for 2021, and the numbers that they've given us are quite stunning. As you'll see below, half of all American workers made less than $3,100 a month last year. Once upon a time, you could live a very affordable middle class lifestyle on that. But thanks to inflation, such a wage now puts you just barely above the poverty level. The decision that our leaders have been making are absolutely eviscerating the middle class, and that should deeply trouble all of us. Yes, it should. More than 30% of all American workers made less than 20 grand. 30% of the country made less than 20 grand. The average rent in this country is uh, essentially that. Now, more than 41% of all Americans made less than 30 grand. And guess what? 62% of all Americans not in that boat made less than 50 grand grand. These numbers tell us that most Americans are just barely scraping by, which also explain, explains the credit card debt and liabilities increasing into the trillions of dollars. Now, definition, 50% of wage earners had net compensation less than or equal to the median wage, estimated at 37 Gs. If we were still living in the 1980s, of course, that would be fine, but we're not in 1980 anymore. In 2022, the poverty level for a household of five in the United States is $31,000. And of course, if you divide 37,000 by 12, that gives you $3,100. For the purpose of this article, we're just going to round it again to 3100 Half of all American workers make more than that per month, and half of all American workers make less than that per month. And guess what? The rent prices for a single-family home swelled during the first half of 2022, hitting a national average of $2,500 a month, a 13.4% increase compared to the same period in 2021. That is unfathomable. If you're only earning $3,100 a month and you have to spend $2,500 of it for rent, that leaves you absolutely nothing for anything else. For example, all of us have to eat. And of course, <laughs> speaking of eating dollars and earning, triple-digit inflation could be coming to the USA if Saudi Arabia dumps the petrodollar. And I bring this up because not necessarily the Scary headline of triple-digit inflation, but International Monetary Fund released a new global financial stability report that warns that a series of cascading shocks endanger global financial stability. The IMF said that the health of the global financial system had materially worsened since the last year's report. Nearly every central bank in the world is raising interest rates after years of negative rates, which the main takeaway for that, if they dump the petrodollar in China's yuan soars, most on record after Beijing orders banks to to dump ding 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 dollars so i felt that those headlines are obviously connected uh and of course you guys all saw yesterday or if you hadn't the federal reserve hiked the u.s interest rate another 75 basis points now china the offshore yuan hit record low amid chatter of wealthy Chinese capital exodus. Chinese state-owned banks were actively selling dollars no doubt under orders from the party hq triggering stop losses and sparking the biggest single day gain for the offshore one in history yen is rallying on speculation of yet another round of intervention and i bring this up just just because okay think about it the whole 
oh, sanctions, what we did to Russia for invading Ukraine. If China were to, say, invade that little island that everyone's up in a tizzy about that Nancy Pelosi visited, and we're also doing a Lend-Lease Act to help them defend <clears throat> Taiwan, in case you're uh, not paying attention, wouldn't you want to dump all your dollars before you do that? Seems like a trillion dollar question to me. Now, container imports to Los Angeles and Long Beach are plummeting worst levels since, guess what, the Great Recession. September is usually a strong month for the West Coast imports as U.S. companies bring in their year-end holiday goods. Not so this year. Port of Los Angeles reported its lowest import total for September since 2009 amid the Great Recession, a day before the neighboring port at Long Beach posted its weakest import total since 2016. So, uh, I should paint you a pretty nice picture. 2009, 2016, worst level since. Shippers have shifted volumes to the East Coast and Gulf Coast ports, fearing disruptions from West Coast port labor negotiations. Volumes are now pulling back nationwide due to falling demand as well. And ocean shipping costs decline 84%. Truckers on verge of losing money. The period between Labor Day and Christmas is typically peak shipping season. Well, don't expect much of a peak this year. No backlog at California ports. This number is... Uh, I, I had to read it multiple times to make sure that I was <laughs> going to read it right for the video. The queue of ships waiting to unload... Uh, at Los Angeles and Long Beach fell from a peak of 109 ships in January to 4 just four vessels this week. 109 ships in a backlog to unload to four. Just think about that for about, you know, 10 minutes. Four vessels, that's it. And, of course, container imports to the U.S. in September declined by 11% from a year earlier and by another 12.4% from August. Shipping lines have canceled between 26 to 31% of their sailing across the Pacific. 30% less cargo. In September of 2021, the average cost for a shipping container, as you guys remember, during the uh, gold rush exceeded $20,000 for a container. Last week, the average cost to ship that fell 84% to just $2,700. So instead of twenty grand, 2700 That's not a lot to work with. And of course, September versus September, year over year, down 26.6%. And a positive comparison versus other years was September of 2009, coming out of the Great Recession. Biden economy. U.S. is only 25 days of diesel supply. Shortage could cripple the economy. So it's not just shipping ports. America has only 25 days of diesel supply thanks to Biden's economic crippling policies. A diesel fuel crisis will cripple the United States. Oil prices and President Joe Biden continue draining the SPR. That's the Strategic Petroleum Reserve have dominated the headlines over the past few weeks, indicating a looming diesel fuel shortage. Diesel doesn't get much of the limelight as oil and gas, but it should because diesel fuel is the industrial lifeblood of the United States, and the price of diesel alone probably has a more significant impact on inflation and the prices you're paying at the grocery store. Semi-trucks don't move, farms are shut down, critical manufacturing sectors are crippled without diesel. The U.S. has just 25 days of diesel supply, the lowest since another headline coming out of 2008. 2007 Great Recession time frame. The average of distillates supplied a proxy for demand rose to its highest seasonal level since 2007. Retail prices have been steadily climbing for more than two weeks at $5.32 a gallon. They are 50% higher than this time last year. And of course, 50% higher means your groceries are going to be more than 50% higher to help cover or offset that. And U.S. home prices could fall as much as 20% next year, which is hopefully conservative because the prices are astronomical. Home prices have slumped during the second half of 2022. Of course, mortgage rates are through the roof. Demand for residential real estate is cooling. Demand could fall by as much as, uh, or prices could fall by as much as 20% next year as mortgage rates climb. Expect home sales to keep falling. Sales will have fallen to the incompressible minimum level. Now, home sales fell to 4.7 million last month, down 1.5% from August. Mortgage rates have more than doubled this year. 
Again, mortgage rates have more than doubled this year. The average rate on a typical 30-year mortgage rose this week to just shy of 7%, 6.94% from just 3.2% in January. Average rate of a 15-year fixed is now 6.23% compared with 2.33% a year ago. Again, over 6% compared to about 2%. Prices have to fall substantially in order to restore equilibrium. Median home sale price rose to 384000 in September, up 8.4% from a year ago. Think about that. Median home sale price just shy of 400 grand rates could reach and uh, think about that in comparison to the fact most Americans at least 50% of the country is making less than $3,100 a month rates could reach 8.5% which would be another big shock to the housing market rates to reach double digits by April 2023 and I doubt we'll have to wait that long mortgage rates have not hit those levels since Hmm, you guessed it, 1989, when they were 10.25%. The highest mortgage rate in the United States historically has been 16.64%. In October of 1981, think of uh, the Volcker era, Fed raised to raise its benchmark interest rate by up to an additional 1.5% by year end. And of course, again, they just rose rates yesterday on Wednesday. Survey, nearly one in five Americans skipped meals, didn't buy groceries due to high inflation. Nearly one in five. So think about that, 20% of your neighborhood have skipped meals or did not buy groceries due to surging inflation, including 28% of Gen Z and 23% of millennials. Brutal. And of course, Facebook craters to <laughs> craters 20% to six year low after dismal earnings, massive CapEx guidance, revenue warning. So keep an eye as uh, everything is looking more glum, sorry to say. If you guys found anything interesting or you learn anything new, again, smack the like button, leave a comment down below, even if it's just an emoji. Anyone you like, throw an eggplant emoji. I don't care. Subscribe, share with family, friends, and hit that notification bell to stay up to date. Thank you guys for 20,000 views. Let's get it.